Um, so my, my uh, presentation uh, today uh, relates to uh, the idea of a vision uh, for Korean unification and principles that, that frame and, and guide unification. Uh, since President Park's Dresden speech, uh, there's been a lot of discussion about unification in relation to the opportunities it, it presents. She used the term uh, bonanza uh, for the potential of, uh, that, that could arise out of unification. Uh, and I think it's important in thinking about unification as something that creates opportunity uh, rather than simply uh, a, a, a pile of problems that can appear insuperable. That we not just focus on the economic aspect, which is what she was talking about when she talked about bonanza. Uh, there's also potential uh, for vastly improved security situation in Northeast Asia, uh, potential for regional economic development, as North Korea is a major obstacle uh, to that development, an, an obstacle that all the surrounding countries experience, Russia, China, uh, Japan, as well as, as well as South Korea. But what I want to uh, talk about today is looking at the, the, the idea of thinking of unification as an opportunity, thinking of the opportunity for Korea and Korean people to reconnect with their history, um, which is maybe a, a, an idea that hasn't been given uh, too much thought and, and is perhaps uh, so, something of a striking or radical idea. But I think it's very, very important. Uh, the Korean ambassador to the U.S., Ambassador Ahn, at a recent conference at, at CSIS that Dr. Cha uh, organized and hosted, uh, talked about uh, unification in terms of, you know, it's no longer if, but, but when. And the when could be extremely soon, therefore it's important to prepare now. And what I want to, to, to say or emphasize today is preparation is not only about the, the politics, the economics, the contingency planning for various scenarios that, that, that might arise, uh, but also about the vision for the new country that would be created after unification occurs. Uh, and that is the focus of, uh, of, of a new book that's recently come out in Korea. It's called The Korean Dream, A Vision for United Korea. Uh, by the founder and chairman of Global Peace Foundation, which is the organization I, I, I work for, um, uh, Dr. Hyunjin Preston Moon. Uh, this book was launched uh, end of September in Korea. Uh, there was a conference accompanying it. Uh, Dr. Cha was there and, and, and spoke there. Uh, and, and the book uh, covers a lot of things, but at its core is focusing on this issue of a vision for a united Korea. Um, I'd like to first of all make a couple of remarks about the importance of vision at times of transformation. Um, at times of uh, extended social order, whether within a country or in the international system, uh, issues of vision don't get talked about very much because the, 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 the underlying principles are, are often assumed and accepted by everybody, the rules are accepted. But at a time of, of, of considerable transformation, as we are, are experiencing at the moment, then the question of, of, of vision becomes extremely important in terms of determining your ultimate goals and directions and the principles that you, you want to follow to guide you there. So in the current setting, with the end of the Cold War back in 89, um, that, that order, that Cold War bipolar order, collapsed. And uh, at the time, uh, President Bush Sr. talked about a new world order. The new world order has still not emerged. Uh, the new world order is something we're still looking for. And there are competing uh, versions and ideas about what that new order will, will, will look like. Uh, that's something that uh, Henry Kissinger, in his uh, most recent book, World Order, talks about, about the, the competing uh, ideas uh, for a global order. Um, and uh, one of his main points is that the European-based uh, vision of order based on the Westphalia system uh, is not going to work for, for, for uh, a, a global order. 
because it's um, it, it, it's it's uh, it's both its premises and its practice are too different from uh, what what is the present situation in, in Asia. So let me quote something that Kissinger said. This was actually he said in in uh, the first Assan Institute Memorial Lecture back in, in 2010. Uh, when one talks about world order, about peace and conflict, the issue always comes down to this. Does there exist a vision of the future? And does there exist the ability and commitment to achieve it? Societies cannot simply live by consuming what they have already done. And in today's world, there are so many changes taking place simultaneously that only those societies that can develop a vision for the future are going to be able to handle them, handle the, the, the great number of changes that are, that are going on. So my contention is that uh, in a time of great transition and transformation, uh, you, you have to start off and do all the practical things within the framework of a vision that you have to articulate because you're, you're breaking uh, new ground. Um, and the unification of Korea would definitely be a major transformation, not, not just for the Korean Peninsula, but for the region, uh, and indeed for the world, as it would mean basically removing or ending the last vestige of the Cold War ideological uh, division um, that, that, that took place. Um, let, let me, just to underline the importance uh, of vision and principles, say a brief word about the, the country that we live in, the United States. Um, the founding of the United States was also a tremendously transformational event in, in world history. Uh, and, and the founders thought it necessary in, in, um, in, in pursuing that, that change and separating from, from uh, Britain uh, to not only lay out their complaints against the British crown, uh, but to lay out fundamental principles uh, upon which they wanted to build the, the new nation, and that's in the Declaration of Independence. And I recognize that there's scholarly debate about you know, the, the relationship of the Declaration and, and, and the Constitution, um, but uh, I stand with Abraham Lincoln on that and uh, see the two as, as very uh, intimately connected. I think I'm in good company there. Um, the, the point about the Declaration of Independence was that it, it, it laid out principles that had resonance beyond the time and place in which they were articulated. So they became a thread through uh, American history, a touchstone against which American practice could be judged, uh, and that was what happened in, in the Civil War. The, the Constitution already made compromises with the system of slavery, uh, but ultimately uh, those, those compromises uh, were challenged in the Civil War on the basis of principles articulated in the Declaration. And that's what Lincoln did in his Gettysburg Address to, to, to connect uh, those two things. Uh, those principles also uh, became a standard, a, a, a hope uh, for people in other parts of the world living under various types of authoritarian uh, regimes. So I mentioned that as a historical example we're all familiar with, um, because often in dealing with the practicalities of uh, politics, international relations, economics, all of those necessary practical things, that larger framework can, can be forgotten. Now, um, in Korean, in Korean history, um, Korea has, um, one of the things that this, this book does is to draw a parallel uh, between the principles uh, stated in the Declaration of, of, of Independence in the United States and historic principles uh, that have run like a thread through Korean history. The historic principles expressed most um, fundamentally in the principle of, of Hongik Ingan. Hongik Ingan is associated with the uh, legendary founder of Korea, uh, Dangun. Um, but has been a practical principle that has sort of been a compass and touchstone uh, for Koreans at times of crisis through, through their history. Hongik Ingan means, roughly or broadly speaking, uh, to live or act uh, for the greater benefit of all humanity. So in other words, it's setting a standard for a people, the Korean people, for a nation, 
um, that, that its uh, goals and purposes and actions should bring benefit to the whole of humanity. Um, the, the, the theme, uh, the most fundamental theme of this book is to say that to prepare for the future, the future of a unified Korea, we need to look to our past, addressing Koreans. Koreans need to look to their past. And the key or core thing that they need to look to is uh, to, to, to reconnect uh, with the fundamental principles uh, that are expressed in Hongi Gingan and related, related ideas. Um, Hongi Gingan is not just ancient history. It, it, it was an important uh, principle um, that was expressed by many groups and organizations in the very critical period uh, from the, 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 the decline and, and eventual collapse of the Chosun dynasty in the uh, uh, late 19th, early 20th century, uh, and then under Japanese uh, colonialism. Um, the Dejongyo movement, which was uh, appealed to, to the ancient principles and traditions of, 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 of Korea, um, was, was, it's thought of today as a, as a native religious movement. But the significance in the early 20th century was that these were people who looked to those principles as the basis for creating an independent nation. So many of the followers of Daejeonggyo were among the signatories of the Korean Declaration of Independence, which sparked the March 1st, 1919 uh, uh, independence movement. Uh, and, and those uh, of people who... <laughs> So, and and basically, all of the signatories of the uh, Declaration of Independence um, look to and recognize the importance of this of this principle. More more recently, in more in more recent times. Uh, after the Second World War, when the Koreas became divided politically, uh, the Ministry of Education in the Republic of Korea uh, developed a curriculum, national curriculum for the schools, uh, and the mission or vision statement for that curriculum cited Hongik Ingan and the Hongik Ingan principles as the foundation for uh, the Korean education system that the qualities and values implied in the Hongi Kingdom principle were what the uh, education system sought to inculcate in students as, as future citizens. So, you know, we're not just talking about, you know, mythical history or, or something very ancient here. Uh, this has been a, a living principle that has guided uh, activists in Korea uh, through the course of, of the 20th century. So, most, almost all of the important figures in the Korean independence movement in the uh, early, early 20th century had a vision for the type of nation that they wanted to achieve. Um, and that vision uh, was not simply to be free of colonial rule, to be independent, but to become a nation that would uh, make a, a major contribution in the world. Um, let me quote a very striking quote from one of those uh, most prominent of the independence figures, a uh, prolific writer, uh, Kim Gu. He said, I wish my nation to be a nation that does not just imitate others, but rather be a nation that is the source of a new and higher culture, that it can become the goal and example for others. And thus, true world peace could come from our nation. I believe that this is the Hongi Ingan ideal of our national ancestor, Dangun. Uh, so that type of thought was very common among the uh, uh, major figures of the independence movement. So um, my, my proposition is that as the prospect of unification uh, is now something that's on the table and being discussed, it's creating a moment to reconnect with the aspirations of those uh, figures of the, not that long ago, of, of the, 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 the earlier part of the last century, uh, to reconnect with their aspirations uh, for the future of the nation and to revisit the sort of discussions they had about what sort of nation that, that should be. Um, their aspirations, of course, 
uh, were cut off in the course of the 20th century, first by uh, Japanese colonialism, uh, then of course that period from 45 to 48, there was a great deal of, of hope that yes, there would be a unified Korea democratic elections, but fed by the idea and the vision that this united nation would be built on these uh, historic uh, Korean principles and become a very special sort of nation. That, that's what guided uh, those people. Um, that didn't happen because of the circumstances, as you know, of the, of the Cold War, um, the ideological division. Uh, instead, two countries were, were established and, and, and the Korean War occurred. Um, the importance of uh, the, the, the vision of, that I'm, I'm talking about, and, and the book is described as the, the Korean dream, uh, is twofold as I see it. It is practical importance. In relation to North Korea, uh, unification between South and North is not simply a matter of economic uh, development, of, of, of political negotiations and organization. It's also the coming together of a separated people. I mean, Koreans are uh, a remarkably homogeneous people. Uh, culturally, ethnically, uh, linguistically. Um, in the course of the past 65, 70 years, of course, the uh, numerous social, cultural differences have developed between people of the North and the South, and e even certain linguistic differences. But still, that's 65 and 70 years compared with a, a several thousand year history before that, where there's shared culture, uh, shared traditions, and shared understanding. Uh, I think th this is uh, uh, an aspect of unification that the Korean government recognizes. Uh, in President Park's Dresden Declaration, uh, she laid out three tracks for engaging with North Korea. The third track involved cultural exchanges and actually looking for a common cultural ground and foundation uh, be be between the, the, the two peoples. Uh, in relation to South Korea, I think this sort of vision can provide a, base, a basis for unity and cooperation among South Koreans in working for unification or approaching unification. Uh, that can bridge the, uh, the ideological and political divisions that are very um, uh, alive and, and, and strong and a, 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 a sort of seemingly a permanent feature of South Korean politics. Uh, those differences relate in great part to different perceptions of the North, different perceptions of history since the division of the, of the peninsula. Um, and it seems to me that a vision that stresses Koreanness that is shared by all Koreans or, or Korean identity and a perspective on history that stretches far back beyond the 1945-1948 period when, when division occurred uh, can be a powerful uh, force or a powerful uh, uh, framework uh, for, for uh, the possibility of cooperation between the up to now uh, con conflicting uh, views within the South. Um, so that's my, 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 my thoughts and presentation on, on the issue of the, from the book, on the issue of, of, of vision. Uh, second uh, major point I'd, I'd like to mention more briefly is that uh, one thing that the book stresses and actually was, was emphasized in the, in, the, in the book launch event in the conference is the, the role of popular engagement uh, in the process of, of unification. Uh, repeat again that unification will not just be about governments or even private investors. Um, we've stressed that the, the, the Unification will be a coming together of a separated people. We talked about Korean history and Korean character and, and identity. So there's a need for people, for, for popular engagement in the process of unification. And that should be on the foundation of a shared vision uh, for unification. Uh, so that, in part, is a, is a process of, of, of education and getting people on board, showing the advantages, the opportunities, but more than that, it, it's not simply a PR campaign to get people to say, yes, when they're polled, uh, I support unification, whereas now, still I think, uh, especially among the young, uh, many are saying no or not yet. But, 
Um, but more than that, it, it is to get people engaged through practical action. Uh, and the means of engagement is through the activities of civic associations and NGOs. Uh, those of you who know your Tocqueville will know that he places tremendous importance on civic associations as the sort of lifeblood of, of a vibrant and healthy democracy because of the engagement of citizens that it, that it encourages and brings about uh, the taking of responsibility by, by citizens. So that's another major theme of, of, of the book, is the importance of public engagement through uh, the activities of civic associations and NGOs, many of which are already active in, in the North. I mean, it, it's uh, an uncertain uh, type of um, situation in that there are times when the North Korean regime will accept certain NGOs and their activities, and there are times when they will, 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 will shut them down and, and cut, them, cut them off. Um, but still, uh, it, it is a, 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 a wedge in the door uh, and the beginnings of making people-to-people -people connections with people in the North. I think the importance of these uh, associations are, 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 are threefold. Um, first of all, when, when change comes uh, through whatever scenario, there are going to be many activities uh, that are needed that are beyond the scope of government, uh, especially activities on the, on the local on a local level. Um, Health care, education, simple provision of, of, of food on local levels, there's, there's all sorts of range of, of activities that committed NGOs uh, can, can provide. Also, uh, successful unification, I think, uh, cannot be simply a top-down process. There has to be people-to-people -people connection between people from the South and people from the North. And uh, NGOs, civic associations, are the natural means for that to happen. And then I think thirdly, and maybe equally important, is that this sort of approach, this sort of united effort uh, towards um, preparing to, 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 to build up uh, and, and lift up communities in the north on a grassroots level uh, can create unity among very diverse groups in South Korea. Uh, one of the things that took place at the uh, recent conference uh, which the, the, the book was launched, um, one of the co-sponsors is an organization called Action for Pre-United which is a coalition of almost 400 civic associ associations and NGOs that are uh, involved in one way or another with North Korean related issues. Uh, these groups represent different faith traditions, Buddhist, Christian, uh, both Catholic and Protestant, Confucian-based native religion, um, political uh, views of left of center, right of center, uh, and also humanitarian groups and human rights groups, which in the past haven't always seen eye to eye on, on, on how to engage with the North and what issues are, are the most important. Uh, so for all those, all those, um, all those reasons, th this, this sort of coalition uh, can form the basis for uh, a type of public-private partnership with government, uh, a united basis for looking to rebuild uh, North Korea uh, through not just investment and government activity, but through uh, popular-based movement of engagement with, with, with people in the North. Um, that, that's the, 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 the second point I want to make. Uh, and just in conclusion, I will say, obviously there's many difficulties are going to appear on the path to unification. Some of them are foreseeable. and. People are doing contingency planning in Korea and the Ministry of Unification. Dr. Cha has a, a group that's looking at certain aspects of, of, of what needs to be prepared for. And uh, there, there are many people thinking uh, deeply about, about the foreseeable challenges. Uh, there are going to be some unforeseeable ones. Nobody knows exactly when or how change is, is, is going to happen in, in, uh, in, in North Korea. Um, but the end result, looking, looking at where unification might end would mean, uh, can, can mean that Korea will play a much larger role both in the region and the world. Uh, 
uh, a unified Korea, once it gets through the transition period, will clearly have a much larger uh, economy. Uh, economists talk about it uh, rivaling or surpassing that of Japan. Um, it will have a, a powerful regional role because unification will open the door then to regional integration, to, to at least the possibility of serious discussions about security arrangements, um, certainly much greater economic integration. Uh, North Korea is a bit like a dam holding back the, 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 the flow of economic growth and prosperity in many, in many respects. Uh, and then finally, relating back to the Hong Kingan idea, uh, a united Korea would have a powerful demonstration effect uh, to other areas of conflict in the world as a model of conflict resolution um, and generate uh, a large number of international public goods. And I will conclude there. Great, thank you. Thank you.